Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to TBR Collector! This is my TBR game that we play monthly. You'll get the hang of it if you're new, but I think most of you know <laughs> what we're doing here. Guys, May, May. May as a reading month, absolutely diabolical. I don't even, ah, I don't want to talk about it. Can you go get the Pinot Grigio? She needs a glass, please go. Pinot Just Grigio. Water. It was one of the worst reading months I have ever had. I had a few highs, I had a few five stars, I think I had two or three five stars, but just everything else was not good. <laughs> well no, I had some few, a few good things, but for the most part, May was not a good reading month. So coming into June's TBR Cluedo, I'm just hoping that I don't get any horrible prompts and like, <laughs> That this can help me have a good reading month in June because I need it. Let me tell you. I just I just need I need something I need the universe to smile on me a little bit because I'm going through it a little bit So shall we just get into June's TBR Cluedo and see what I'm gonna be reading in June and fingers crossed It will be better than what I read in May. Okay, it's time for roll one of June TBR Cluedo Hopefully this is gonna save me <laughs> my reading fortunes Let's see what we roll. We've got number six, which is yellow, over in the thriller. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh, that rolled off. That's number one. <laughs> so we've got one and a three. So I am gonna go, let's just go one. That is number seven, which is, oh, something with under 6,000 ratings on Goodreads. So roll number one was a thriller that is under 6,000 ratings. And this book, we got lucky, because this is one that I'm reading the next, the next book I'm reading. He went and looked on Goodreads for how many ratings it has, and it has 5,965 ratings. So it's just under the amount. And it is Butter by Asako Yuzuki. So this is, I think, partly based on a true story, and it's about a chef or a woman who cooks a lot who supposedly killed a lot of men I don't think through her cooking but that she was having relationships with and we're following a journalist who is investigating that and this is one that one of my patrons very kindly gifted me lately this has been a massive bestseller in Japan and I'm very very excited to get into it myself I think it's gonna be very weird and very like unsettling and confusing and like you guys are so weird oh my god you guys are so weird I know everything is weird I think it might be a bit slow it is quite long it's like 500 pages well just under 500 pages which is quite long <laughs> It says on the back, an unputdownable, breathtakingly original novel about true crime, loneliness, and the female appetite in all its tricky transgressive glory. So I think it's also going to be kind of looking at fat phobia or kind of the disordered eating that women are taught to have throughout their life and women's relationship with food. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what I think of this. This has been a new release that came out that I have just been very, very intrigued by. And I feel like a lot of the Japanese translated fiction I've been reading lately has been more magical, realism-y, contemporary stuff, whereas this seems a bit darker. And I don't think I've, I think I've been, the only thing that I've read that's a thriller that's tra Japanese translated is The Devotion, what's the title? The Devotion of Suspect X, is that the title? I haven't read a lot of Japanese thrillers, so I'm really excited to see what I make of this one. Okay, roll number two. Person number five, which is white over in romance. Let's see how many we roll. Oh my gosh, we've got a three and a four. So I am just going to go one, two, three. That is number 14, which is a favorite author. Okay, fun. Next roll was a romance by a favorite author. And this is the one I decided to give to my patrons to vote on. So they vote on one round of TBR Cluedo every month. And then that ends up being a book club pick. So not only are they voting for something for me to read, they're voting for something for them to read. And I don't necessarily have four romance authors who c categorize as favorite authors because I have to have three five stars on them and also have books that I haven't read. Do you know what I mean? They're on my TBR. So I chose uh, four authors who I have given a five star before. So we've got Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, Beach Read by Emily Henry, Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez, or Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't expecting the one that won to win, <laughs> but I think I probably should have done. So the winner was Beach Read by Emily Henry. I thought for some reason Just for the Summer would win, but I think some people thought, I don't think it's the third in the Part of Your World series, right? I don't think it has any connection to the character. Correct me if I'm wrong if you read it, but Part of Your World and uh, Yours Truly are related to one another, but I don't, but on Goodreads it says it is. Anyways, <laughs> I, I thought that would win because it was on new release. Yeah, Beach Read by Emily Henry. What is, I always get my Emily Henry synopses messed up. 
Uh, so we've got January is a hopeless romantic who narrates her life like she's the lead in a blockbuster movie. Gus is a serious literary type who thinks true love is a fairy tale. But January and Gus have more in common than you both think. They're both broke, they have crippling writer's block, and they need to write bestsellers before summer ends. Oh, this is the one where they swap genres. Is this the one that has a different ending in the US? That would make an interesting book club discussion because how do we discuss the ending? I'm a little bit concerned. I need to look that I need to do well, I need to read the book first and then do some research into it. But yeah, this is the one where I think she's a romance author and he's like a literary fiction author, or the other way around, and they swap genres. But yeah, I read Happy Place by Emily Henry earlier this year and I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to get into more of Emily Henry's backlist because I know she's like everyone's fave, you know? She doesn't quite get me like Annie Hazelwood gets me, but that's okay, you know? And Abby Jimenez, I do think I prefer them. I can objectively see that this well I've only read one book but I can objectively see that Emily Henry's writing appeals to more people but there's just something about the way those two authors write that I adore but I can see that this is maybe better quality but I just love Ali, you know? <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna be reading this together. So if you want to join us in reading this, the link to join my Patreon is always down below. We've also got on my Patreon a readathon running throughout June called Binkathon, which I'll just mention here because I didn't create it. My patrons, my mods, uh, created this whole readathon that we're doing in June. It is so detailed. There's bingo cards, there's licenses, there's like so many layers. Everyone on the Discord has made like spooky, their names like spooky puns on their name. It is truly amazing. I I cannot claim any <laughs> any responsibility for making this. My mods uh, and some of the patrons have done an absolutely amazing job of this and we're all having so much fun participating it in June. So yeah, the link to join the patron is down below if you're interested. There'll be a discussion live show for this and a reading vlog and there's discussion sections on the Discord. So yeah, I'm excited to get more into my Emily Henry era. Okie dokie, roll number three, person number one, which is green. That's on that, it's been locked by re-rolling one of them. <laughs> Rolling one of the dice, that's on that square. Let's see how many we roll. We've got three and a two. Oh, perfect. Let's just go one, two and get the rose prompt. I just knocked something over. <laughs> Roll number three was the rose prompt, which is again linked to the patron. <laughs> There's a lot of patron talking here. Sorry about it. But when, when you join my patron, you get to pick two books off of my physical TBR that you want me to read, and it goes into this. I need to get a new one, a bigger one, I know. But I'm strapped for space here, guys, as we know. <laughs> got no space. So yeah, it goes into here and I pick one and I read it. So, oh my God, this is like, I can't get any. I'm gonna try and get one near the bottom. Okay, I've got one. I'm like trying to pull it out with me. We're gonna have some casualties that fall on the floor probably, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. Okay, let's see what it is. Actually, I didn't, oh no, I spilled one. One man down, okay. Let's see what this is, shall we? It's so far down it might be one I've already read, but I don't know. The Push. I don't even own that. <laughs> she doesn't even go here. I think I have the audiobook for it, which is why it's been picked. Who's picked the push? Rosie. Rosie has picked the push. Well, I'm going to be reading the push. <laughs> to get my hands on the physical copy. There was, I used to let people, I do have it as an audiobook. I used to let people pick like from my audiobook list as well. So that's why it's on there, The Push. Isn't this the one? Okay, let's look at this together. Yeah, I have been really intrigued by this. Oh, I'm actually really excited for this one. A tense, page-turning psychological drama about the making and breaking of a family and a woman whose experience of motherhood is nothing at all for what she hoped for and everything she feared. So I think it's a young woman who's just had a baby, comes convinced something is wrong with her daughter, or is it all in her head? Then their son is born and she has a blissful connection she always imagined, but even by- Oh, so she thinks something's wrong with her daughter. Oh shit. What have people who I'm friends with rated it? Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Chandler, Gabby, Katie have all given it five stars. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so Rosie, you've single-handedly made me read The Pesh. So congratulations. <laughs> I'm actually excited for that one. I think that's the kind of thriller that was super popular when it came out and I kind of missed the boat, but I'm really excited to read that and see what I think of it. Okay, fun, what a good choice. Okay, I feel like we're doing okay so far. Roll number four, which is eight, which is blue over in contemporary. Let's see how many we roll. We got a five or a six. What can I get to in contemporary with a five or a six? 
One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that is number 23, which is a book rated four point something on Goodreads. Role number four was a contemporary that is rated four point something on Goodreads. And we've got another book that I missed the boat with somehow when it came out and I'm now gonna be reading. And it is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is so highly recommended from people who have read it. I think we're following a woman who was in a relationship with her English teacher when she was 15 and he was in his 30s and they had a relationship and now allegations come out of him sexually abusing other students and she is horrified because she believes they were in love. They were in love with each other and I think it's about her unpacking the abuse that she suffered and I think it's going to be tackling that. I've heard that this is an incredibly difficult but very impactful read. Again it's a book that was super popular when it came out I think in like 2020 and it's just taken me so long to get to it. I bet you can guess what I'm reading this for. <laughs> I've just heard that this is really in terms of its subject matter there's been other books that have tackled this but from what I've heard this is this does the best job of handling it with sensitivity, with emotion, with care. I don't want to say I'm excited to read it again when these books are about these sort of topics I don't be like oh my god I'm so excited but like I'm looking forward to reading what has supposedly been a book that a lot of people have enjoyed. Roll number five, we've got person number one again, which is green over in fantasy. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a two or a two. Let's just go, oh no, I thought that was two, that was three. <laughs> what can I get to with that? Oh, I think I can get to that one. So one, two, three, four. That is number 17, which is, oh my God, I think it's one of my hardest prompts. This is a book with multiple audiobook narrators. <gasps> Okay, I'll have to do some research for that one. Next is a fantasy with multiple audiobook narrators, which I guess means I have to listen to the audiobook. Although I do think I have this on Everand, but I checked on Audible. I went through all my fantasy owned books. <laughs> Um, all the more recent ones I've that I've bought uh, to see and not many of them had multiple audiobook narrators I had a few other choices, but they weren't books I was looking forward to as much This one has three audiobook narrators according to audible and it is Keeper of Enchanted Rooms by Charlie M. Holmberg This is a cozy fantasy from my understanding Magic has made itself at home. It's set in Rhode Island in 1846. So it's historical as well, which I love Ah, That's history <laughs> I think it's about this guy who like ends up locked in this magical home and then we have another character from the Boston Institute for the Keeper of Enchanted Rooms who wants to make him make this house his friend. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this one. I've heard good things about this author's other stuff. I think they had one uh, nominated in Romanticy which is interesting, last year. But this is the one that I think is most likely to be my kind of thing with its kind of cozy fantasy-esque uh, stuff. I wasn't planning on reading this, don't know when I'm gonna read it, but it does have three audiobook narrators. It was, a it was a challenge to find a book with multiple audiobook narrators. This is, I don't get this prompt a lot and I'm lucky for that. Imagine if I got that every week, that'd be absolutely diabolical. <laughs> So please let me know what you thought of this one. I'm very much looking forward to sinking my teeth into it. And then our final roll is number two, which is purple over a non-fiction. Let's see how many roll. We've got three and a two. I'm just gonna go one, two. And that is, oh, 30, which is a wild card. Okay, I have no idea what I'm going to pick for my wild card because I have like no books that I have to read this month basically so it's actually not that helpful to get the wild card this is a wasted wild card but i shall um i shall endeavor to pick something <laughs> And then finally we have the wild card. And like I said, I actually, most of my vlogs this month, I don't know what I'm reading for. I've got a few challenge ones. I've got a few where I'm still finalizing the TBR for them. So usually when I get the wild card, I'm like, great. I have so many books that I need to read for vlogs. I can fit into here. I don't, <laughs> I don't this month. So this is gonna be a good wake up karma. Wake up. Karma is a bitch. I can tell you that. So I've picked a book that I'm very excited for but it's the kind of book that I'm so excited for, I push off out of fear. I get, I get that a lot. Like the books I'm really excited for, I almost have to make myself read them. I almost don't want to because there's so much pressure. <laughs> I'm currently, I'm gonna about to start with Butter, a vlog, where this has a chance. I say this has like a 10% chance of being picked and it's out of my hands. Yeah, so this is like, it has a chance of being picked in one vlog and then there's a few other vlogs I can read it in if 
were unsuccessful with that. And that is How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. <laughs> I've been putting it off, it's time to read it. We're following, I've spoken about this 20,000 times, so let's just get through it quickly. We're following a woman who's told an affair, you're gonna get murdered. And so she spends the rest of her life putting together a dossier of everyone in her life and why they might wanna murder her and trying to stop herself from being murdered. Guess what, girlie's murdered. <laughs> Curly's murdered. But it's when she's an old woman and her great niece comes to the house to try and figure out what happened. I, a few people that I very much look up to in terms of their reading, uh, some of their reading taste, have read this and enjoyed it. So I'm really, really looking forward to this one. It is a debut. I'm not expecting it to be like, you know, there's a murder club levels of murder mystery. But I do think it is going to be fun. And I think it's going to be very like, I don't know, it gives me vibes of like knives outy, like kind of funny murder mystery with like clever with clues and like I don't know that kind of like vibe that old house vibe that it's pulling up on so yeah oh it is blurred by J.M. Hall the author of A Spoonful of Murder though oh and the author of Death and Croissants oh two of my least favorite murder mysteries <laughs> oh, shit oh dear Okay, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, I'm very excited to read it, so hopefully I will get to it at some point this month. There we have it, everyone. That is my Jean TBR plus The Push, which I need to go get my hands on. Um, let me know what you've thought of any of these books. Also, let me know what's on your June TBR. Are you going to have a good reading month? Hopefully we all <laughs> Hopefully we're all going to have a great reading month. And thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you very soon. I'm very excited for the vlog that's hopefully going to come out this weekend if I can get my skates on and get reading quicker. Um, but thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!